the water quality monitoring that they do uh, throughout the watershed. Thank you for being here, Jess, and I'll get your power. So um, my name is Jess Sterling. I am the Technical Programs Director at Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. Jason Olseth, who is the Riverkeeper, was supposed to be here today, but he was sick this morning, so I'm here filling in for him. But I'm really excited to be here because I love talking about um, our monitoring work. As Gordon mentioned in the introduction, he didn't mention who the grandmother of Riverkeepers in Georgia is. Um, it's Sally Bethea, and I'm actually channeling here. If anybody's ever met Sally, I'm wearing my denim jacket, channeling Sally Bethea. Um, she um, was the founding river keeper of Chattahoochee. She was the founding river keeper at Chattahoochee River Keeper. Um, she retired five years ago, and um, the Chattahoochee River is much cleaner um, than it was 25 years ago because of the work that she's done. Um, as Gord mentioned, it's still not perfect. Um, we have a lot of urban water issues. Metro Atlanta is growing, um, and it seems like the urban water quality issues seem to grow too. So I'm going to talk about um, some of the water quality monitoring work that we do, um, kind of run through a few of our programs, and I'd be happy to take any questions or any suggestions about how we can improve our water quality monitoring work. So as you know, our rivers and streams are impaired. So in the Chattahoochee, there are 413 miles of river miles that are listed as impaired, um, and only 20% of those have been assessed by um, agencies. So what we have tried to do, because Riverkeeper is one of the great things about the work we do, is we can be really nimble. So we can, we can shift priorities really quickly. Um, so what we try to do is complement some of the work the agencies are doing to try to improve water quality. Um, so one of our kind of shining examples of our, one of our biggest programs is our Neighborhood Water Watch program. So this program started, we had a woman call us who wanted to know what the water was like in Tanya Creek in, in a park in her neighborhood in Atlanta. She wanted to know if it was okay for her dog to swim in it. And we were like, we don't know. <laughs> so we started a program, um, a bacteria monitoring program, um, where we have volunteers go out and collect samples every single week. We have built a water quality lab um, in our offices in uh, Atlanta, LaGrange, and Gainesville. Um, and so we have, um, I think, 170 volunteers right now that bring us samples from sites all over the watershed every week. And we're trying to track pollution problems. In Atlanta, where I work, the main thing we're looking for is this, sewer spills. You know, sewer spills in Atlanta are a lot better downstream of Atlanta, but the infrastructure is old. And so there are cracked and leaking sewer lines, inflow and infiltration into the sewer line is a huge issue. And this, does anybody know what this white stuff hanging, oops, the hanging off of this is? Toilet paper. No, it's actually worse. Those are baby wipes. So that's one of the biggest, um, any sewer you know, operator will tell you that's one of the biggest things. It's facts, oils, greases, and baby wipes are the biggest causes of sewer spills. Um, so we started this program um, in 2012. Um, you know, we monitor about 5,000, we take about 5,000 samples a year from neighborhood water watch. And since we started the program, we have found 60 sewer spills. So we have basically go, shown that if you go into a watershed in, in Atlanta and you start looking for sewer spills, you're going to find them. And a lot of them are in places that people wouldn't see. Um, you know, they're kind of back, you know, in the woods, and you know, nobody would really notice that they're there. Um, but we have developed really good relationships with local municipalities. So we find the sites. We actually go up and walk up to the streams. Um, that's one of our um, fellows there with a fluorometer, and she's actually in the field and trapping and sewage and waders. Um, we all do this, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, you know, finding the source, and then we call the city, and they're out there um, to fix the problem. So it's either the city of Atlanta, you know, Fulton County, Cobb County. You know, we have relationships with all the Atlanta utilities. Um, another one of our big monitoring programs that we work with Georgia EPD on is our Lake Nutrient Monitoring. So um, both uh, Lake Lanier um, and West Point Lake um, are monitored for nutrients, so we sample for chlorophyll A. So during the growing season, so April through October, we go out um, monthly and take um, data. So on Lake Lanier, we have 10 monitoring stations. Um, and on West Point Lake, we have two monitoring stations. And so um, we actually developed a sampling quality 
Assurance Project Plan um, through Georgia EPD. So they accept our data um, and it's used in the 303D listing documents. Um, so our data is actually averaged with the data that EPD collects too. Um, so it's, it, we're, we're kind of, we're um, complementing EPD's efforts in, um, you know, in, in the listing decisions on these lakes. Um, so in Lake Lanier, um, this year we've had a really wet, really, um, a really wet year, and we exceeded the water quality standard, um, or yeah, the water quality standard for chlorophyll bay at all. Um, so we monitored 10 locations, but there are standards at five, and we exceeded at five stations. So the growing season average for chlorophyll bay exceeded. Um, so in West Point Lake, um, it's a much better story. The standard is a lot higher in West Point Lake, um, but um, the West Point Lake is much cleaner now, a lot due to a lot of the work that the city of Atlanta has done to clean up their sewers. Um, another really, I don't know if you guys, have you, has anybody ever heard of the bacterial alert program? <coughs> so we have a program, somebody's nodding their head in the back. Um, so with the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, and the National Park Service, Chattanooga Georgia Riverview has a partnership where we have, um, we have gauges at um, three locations in the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. So upstream of Atlanta, um, in the National Recreation Area, we have three locations where they have, USGS has gauges, water quality gauges, so flow and water quality gauges. Um, and we, um, USGS has developed models based on bacteria samples that we go out and collect um, weekly. And um, over the last 40 years we've been doing this program. And so um, we issue, this is a little bit hard to see, but here's a link to, the, to where the data is. Um, they issue real-time um, warnings to recreational river users on bacteria levels. So it's a model between um, bacteria and turbidity. So, Based on how turbid the water is, they can reliably predict the E. coli concentration in the water. So for example, if water quality is good, so this is at Medlock Ridge Road, you can see at the top, I think that's the point where it's not. Um, you know, bacteria here is 42, so it's safe. Um, if it's red, they recommend you use caution. So this is a really awesome resource for people who use the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. Um, there are millions of people who use it every year, paddlers, fishermen, um, just people who take their kids out to wade and things like that. Um, and it's a, it's a program we're really proud of and it is unique. It is the only one in the country like this. So, um, We also um, do some work with dissolved oxygen monitoring. So downstream of Atlanta, um, Atlanta has, there are several wastewater discharges. City of Atlanta, Cobb County, um, Douglasville, Douglas County. Um, there are several major, major wastewater discharges. Um, Fulton County. Um, and when the river is low, so when the flow is um, 650 CFS or 750 CFS at, at Peachtree Creek, um, the river can be up to 40% um, you know, wastewater. So, there's a huge dissolved oxygen load on the river there. Um, a dissolved oxygen demand on the river there. And so there is a sag in dissolved oxygen that is um, about, ooh, I don't know how many miles. It's like 25 miles downstream of the last discharge. And so um, we have developed a program, so we actually watch the gauges. And when the flows are really low, um, it's really hot and really dry, and we know DO is going to be low. Um, we have a sample. We have another you know sampling assurance sampling quality assurance project plan with the state. So we'll actually go out with a meter and take dissolved oxygen samples every mile um, to make sure that the river is meeting dissolved water quality standards. And we have actually found times where it's not. So um, it's something that we are continuing to watch. Um, the state has actually done some things lately. Um, there used to be a flow standard at Beach Street Creek, and that has been removed in the <coughs> review two years ago. Um, and then um, EPD has also removed one of their water quality gauges uh, that had dissolved oxygen on it. So um, 
it's something that we're continuing to monitor. It's been really wet the last two years, so it hasn't been a problem, but um, in, a, in a dry year, it really is. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is my newest baby. Um, it's Cassie, so it's our Chattahoochee um, Aquatic Sensor System Integrated. So we um, are using this to complement our neighborhood water wash program, but they're real-time water quality sensors. We've used um, the, it's a Mayfly, it's an Arduino board that was developed by the Stroud Water Research Center and by their engineers at the Stroud Water Research Center in Pennsylvania. And um, we are currently monitoring at two locations, real-time um, turbidity, or not turbidity, temperature and conductivity in real time. Um, and we're really looking to expand this um, throughout the watershed. We have a plan to build another five this year and put these out in the field. Um, we're really excited about using this technology um, throughout the watershed. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a new fun thing to do. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions or, you know, if you guys have any ideas of how work you guys are doing, compliment some of the work that we're trying to do. I'm happy to answer. How frequently you want to sample and what you want it to sample, and um, so things like that. Is that your question? Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's similar to buy. The really awesome thing about this is that we can build these for about five hundred dollars each that measure. I mean, the, the, this one's just measuring temperature and conductivity. Whereas if I were to go to buy a YSI, it would be, you know, twenty thousand dollars. And it has, you know, it has a cellular data plan, so I can go online and look. Um, continuously, you know, at what water quality is doing. It's especially, it's, we're really excited about seeing what it does during storm events because we have a lot of problems. Storm water is probably our biggest pollution threat in the Chattahoochee, and so we're really excited to see how this can help us with some of that tracking. One more question for What's Jess? the lifespan of one of these um, tracking devices? We have no idea. <laughs> I've had one out since the first one went out in September. It's working great. Um, I haven't had any issues with it at all. Um, I put the second one out in December, so we're going to see. Um, Stroud has had some out for six years. And I have a feeling it's going to be better here because their streams actually get really cold and freeze, and ours don't. So um, I think we're going to actually have a little bit easier time than they do. So. Uh, well, we need to move on to the next talk if you save the question for the, for the panel. Um, Thank you, Jess. Great job.